credit card debt. How bad is it really if you don't pay it off every single month? Some people think it's the end of the world, but is it really? Hey, so you have a little bit of credit card debt and most people make you feel like it's the end of the world, especially if you don't pay it off down in full every single month. In fact, many financial quote unquote experts like Dave Ramsey, Susie Orman, and many others, although they're good people, their advice would be don't do anything until you pay off that credit card debt. Don't invest, don't do nothing until you pay down that credit card debt. Now, while that is one school of thought to subscribe to, I really wanna dive into the numbers and really crack open it and discuss how bad is it really if you don't pay off your debt every single month? So let's, for the sake of argument, just say you have $10,000 in credit card debt. And also for the sake of argument, let's just say you have a horrible APR, meaning you have like a 20% APR credit card. I think that's about as high as it gets. I mean, you can get like 22, I think, but let's just say you're at about a 20% APR credit card. Now, if you don't understand how APR works, let's take a side note and break that down. So 20% APR, that is your annual percentage rate. Well, you take that 20% and you divide it by 12. And what you come up with is 0.0167. That is your monthly percentage rate. And so when you look at that $10,000 balance that you have, we're basically going to multiply that by the new monthly percentage rate, which will give you a hundred and sixty seven dollars in interest every single month so that is exactly what it's costing you to carry that balance forward every single month and now obviously when you make payments you chip away at that you chip away at the interest or are you chipping away at the principal that's a whole nother story a whole nother video but let's just say you bought some ten thousand dollar piece of furniture Every month that you were not paying that furniture off, that furniture went from costing you $10,000 to $10,167 and so forth and so on. You keep adding $167 every single month as long as that balance is $10,000 and you're probably making minimum payments. Now, here's why that's not the end of the world. Number one, $167, um, depending on your financial bracket or your income bracket, may not be a big deal, but more importantly, it may not be the end of the world because the real question is, am I able to make more than $167 with the same $10,000? So let me be a little bit more clear. Let's say you have $10,000 cash and you have $10,000 on a credit card and you need some new furniture or maybe you want some new furniture or you need a new car or maybe you just want a new car, whatever the case may be. And you have the ability to pay $10,000 cash or you have the ability to pay with a credit card. Now on the surface, you may say, well, of course, just pay with the cash. It's paid for, it's done. But I want to introduce a third option. Let's just say you also know how to invest in the stock market or you know how to do something that can give you some type of yield or return on your investment, return on your money. And so if, for as my case, I'm into stocks and option trades, so if I know confidently the strategies, the tactics, and how to comfortably and safely go into the stock market and take that same $10,000, if I can make $500 a month from that 10,000 cash, in my head, I know that that means I can take the $500, I can pay down the $167 in interest or money that it's costing me to borrow that $10,000 every single month, but I would still have $333 left that I can use to pay down the principal balance. So if I can continue doing that over time, I know that I can out earn potentially the more than the amount that they're charging me every single month in interest. Now, if you are a hardcore Dave Ramsey, Susie Orman, don't drink coffee, don't go out and have any fun until you pay off your debt fan, you're probably going to say, wait a minute, this guy's crazy. 
he's not taking into effect the fact that you can lose money in the stock market and that there's no guarantees and that there's risk to the market. Listen, I am not discounting all of those things. What I'm simply trying to say is if you don't pay it off every single month, is it the end of the world or is it only $167? Number two, do you have an opportunity where you can out earn the $167 potentially? If so, it may be worth exploring that opportunity that can out earn the $160 that you're going to get charged in interest versus worrying about it being the end of the world because you're getting charged 167 bucks, but you're missing out on the opportunity over here to potentially make $500 a month, which is way more than the $167 that they're charging you. Now, you always want to invest responsibly or go into any business venture responsibly, but I really just want you thinking, is it the end of the world or is it only 167 bucks? And is there somewhere else that I can use that money wiser that can give me a better return on investment? If you think about it like that, you'll realize it's not the end of the world. It's actually the beginning of a whole new world, the beginning of a world where your money makes money for you. And then you use that money to turn around and pay off your debt. In fact, I did a whole video around credit cards and borrowing money and going in debt to invest. Should you do it? Should you not do it? You're just going to have to check out that video to find out. You can watch that video right here on this page by clicking the button here or you can click the link in the description. I'm signing off saying, remember, if you're investing in the stock market, you never go broke taking a profit.